Hey everyone, we're going to go through how to build a directory website on WordPress using Elementor or a theme or a plugin which kind of is built with Elementor. So we're not using something outside of Elementor that we have to adapt with codes and stuff like that. Now, we've got a client that we're currently working on a site for at the moment, and we're near and near, nearly built, completed with it, but I thought it'd be really great to showcase a video on how we use the My Listing directory theme. Now, what is a directory? Let's say you're showcasing or selling cars or properties that you're renting out, or you're just showcasing properties. Or maybe you run a business which is for doctors or pharmacists or people of a particular niche or specialism. And you want people out there, users, to be able to go to your website and they're able to search for a certain type of person or support using your website, basically like a directory. And they can then contact that person and arrange whatever they want to arrange with them or maybe they can't contact them and they've got to go through admin. It depends on your funnel and how you want to do your business flow. Now, we're using my listing and I mean, I've tested out listing pro, geo directory, tons and tons. I say tons, I've actually I tested out 11 directories and I always found there was an issue. Somewhere along the line, there was something that just made me go, this is not going to cut it. And then I came across my listing and I gave it a really good go. And I've used this now three times on other websites. This is the fourth time I'm using it. So it's really, really good on what it does, okay? Let me just show you an example of a demo. So here's a demo for discover great places in London, okay? Don't forget, this is all built with Elemental in terms of what it does, okay? And over here we have some, what you know, where do you wanna look? You have some categories, restaurant cinemas, nightlife, and you know, what are you looking for? But the great thing about this is this is places. Watch what happens when I click real estate the options change for your filters. And if I go for cars, it changes even again. We now have car brand that you could now pick and events, um, which I think is what I had on before actually. Places, there we go. Again, similar kind of, well, similar fields, but then you've got jobs as well. So you could pick different types of jobs. So this is really versatile. And this is the great thing about it. I've used this for a fitness website. I've used it for a digital marketing website. I've also used it for a doctor's website, and now I'm using it for a tutor's website, which is over here. Now, this website isn't completely finished at the moment, okay, so don't look at it and go, what, I don't like those fonts or images. They're all from Canva, by the way. But what I wanna get across, really importantly, is there are nine tabs at the moment, okay? Elementor, Elementor, Elementor. What do I mean by Elementor? The page is pure, just Elementor. It's not using the My Listing theme or anything like that. These are just standard pages that you're gonna build with Elementor, okay? Elementor, 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 Elementor. This page is My Listing theme, and I'm gonna come on to that in a moment. This is also My Listing theme, but, it's, but it also uses WooCommerce. So the great thing about the WooCommerce bit is, you could say to someone, yeah, you can put your business on my directory website, but you gotta pay a fee. One-off fee, monthly fee, different packages, you can set that all up. And when they join, they can pay and then they get onto your website after you've approved and verified them, okay? We're not charging this on here at the moment for tutors to use the site, but I am using the facility anyway on here to do the registration. I'll come back onto that. Then we have my account. That's actually using the WooCommerce bit. So you can go in and you can now see your listing, edit your listing, add another listing, maybe you're a customer and you've purchased something like lessons, you will now see your lessons, what lessons have you paid for, how do you access those lessons, things like that. And the contact, that's just elemental. So out of the nine tabs, there's only three on here, these three, which are actually using the My Listing theme and WooCommerce in a way. Okay, so the rest of it is elemental. And the reason I wanna stress that because there's a lot of themes and plugins out there where you end up having to use almost their mainframe or wireframe, whatever you want to call it, in terms of how you build the site. And when you try and step out of it and focus on just an elemental aspect, you hit either a dead end or you've got to start going into CSS coding. OK, code snippets, brilliant. Site origin CSS, brilliant. But if you've already got lots on because you're building a directory website, this does cut it. Now, I do want to stress though, what is the cost of my listing 
I want to stress this very, very importantly. I am not affiliated. I can't even find it. Where's the pricing bit gone? So the theme is on themeforest.net or Evanto, wherever you want to call it. And it's $59. It works out to £72 or $72 after you add on VAT if you're based in the UK. So one-off cost. And I am not affiliated to my listing. In the description, you are not going to see, look over here, you're not going to see the my listing link. There's going to be no link to Theme Forest or anywhere like that at all. You want to use it, go ahead and use it. I am not making anything off this by talking about them right now, okay? I'm not promoting them. I'm just showing you how I used it to achieve a certain aim after I've tested tons of other themes out there. Okay, so that's the cost of it. Right, let's just come out of that. Uh, right, okay, yeah. So, so what we did is we installed the theme Okay, and what we found is that it's because the theme uses, we had to use Mapbox as well, because when we do the search, okay, by the way, you can see two test subjects on here, okay, these aren't real, okay, this is just me testing out, you know, um, how would it look. Um, when we go to the search area, on this website here, we got a bar on the home page for you to search. Rather than us doing that on the home page, we instead wanted to have a particular page which was purely search. It is in technically three columns, okay? We have a search area here, we have the results. So if there's 10, 15 results, they will all list down here. And then we have a map. We're using Mapbox, not Google Maps, Mapbox. Why? Because setting up Mapbox was a lot easier than setting up Google with the whole API. You still need to get the API with Mapbox, but you just register and it gives you a public key. You can just stick the key in and Hey presto, we're done, okay? Now, what's really good about this search box, okay? At the moment, we only have one uh, group or one category. We can have multiple groups, okay? So we've just got a tutor. If later on the client decides they wanna have a different type of tutor or a specialist area, we could add that on. And we could have particular search filter items for it. But at the moment here, we can do a general search, we could even search by postcode if we so want. And it's worldwide, you know, look, we've, we've got worldwide areas on there. In the subjects, we can pick the subjects that are available. We can also pick the level. Now, this is only going to show you what exists as a listing. OK, there are other levels in here that we've programmed in. OK, uh, there was um, I think it was GCSE and A levels. They're in here as well. However, if none of our teachers have said, we do GCSE, it will not list it for you here. So what it does is stop you from searching for GCSEs because there's no results for that. And I think that's really, really useful. OK, and you can order it by however you want. You can do a search and it's going to search and return the results. Now, what happens when you click into any one of these? When you click into them, it's going to take you to their page. Oh, this is a fake page, by the way. OK, so we have our photo. We can, uh, once you've logged in, you can leave a review. We can also see what the reviews are for this person. This is just me a fake, you know, three out of five. This is fake, by the way, okay? This is me testing out that it all works okay, all right? So people can go in and leave a review. We get to see what they do in terms of subjects, levels, you know, where they live, what's their location, a description about them, da 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 da. And then if you want to contact them, you fill in the details, okay? This is built using Elementor form. So when admin get this email, the email is going to tell them, well, who filled it in, their details. And then it will also have hidden fields here, which will pull back the email address and the name of this tutor. This is me, Imran Sadiq. But I'm not really a tutor, except for Elementor. Ooh. OK, right. So that's how this works. The tutor and parent registration, this page is really, really simple. So you've got to sign in. Sorry, not sign in, register. OK, so if you're a teacher, you leave it on teacher, you fill in your details, create your password, hit sign up, and then you once you're verified, you're allowed to create a listing. Or if you're a parent and guardian, you can again go in and add. There's a bit more details you can actually put here for what are you after. But it's basically another form. It's the same form, actually. Sorry, um, just with an extra details on there. So whether you're a teacher, a parent or a guardian, you can go in and register. And once you're registered, and I'm just going to sign in now. So if I sign in as a tutor, this is what I'm going to see. You can modify the colors, by the way. 
All right, so if you want to have it look a certain way, you can. This is now going to tell me how many people have viewed my profile. Where are they viewing it from? Where are they? You know, how are they viewing it? Um, you can even show even more details, but I've just left it at that. I can go in and look at my listings. I can edit my listings as well. I can, um, you know, I can I can modify my details. It's pretty, pretty cool what this does. And this is where it's using the WooCommerce aspect and my listing as well. But what do I see if I go in as a parent? So I'm just going to log out. And I am going to go in now as a parent. So when I go in as a parent, obviously I'm not going to have all of the spiel I had for the tutor because I haven't got a listing. But what I will now have is if I go to orders, I can now see that I have paid uh, or haven't paid yet. I just did an order where I've said I'm going to pay £25 for a lesson or whatever they're going to do. And if I go to the view details, it then says, you know, this is where admin can actually send them messages. So it says, you know, once you've paid, a link for the session will be shared. And then I sent another message to this person, Jane, to say, this is where, you know, I haven't put a message, but what it should say is click this to access your lesson, for instance. So there's really, really good ways of how you can um, keep the parent, the guardian or even the student informed about what they've paid, where they go for their lesson and things like that. And also with keeping the tutor involved as well. OK, so. Let's, okay, we're up. one other thing I do want to stress though, is that because my listing, okay, let's get back to home. When you start building with Elementor, getting, getting my websites to be 98% on the mobile and 100% on the desktop, I'm finding quite simple to do that. And I love doing it. And I'm not using WP Rocket or Nitro Pack. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. Once you install my listing, and you then also start to use Mapbox, your score, okay, before you've done, before you've built any of these, before you've even done these three pages, I don't want to use the word plummet, but it will plummet to about 55%. And I was like, whoa, hold on a second. But with using Auto Optimize and WP Fastest Cache, and Asset Cleanup plugin. Here is my score at the moment. The desktop is 94. I want it to be 100, but I'll go with 94. And the mobile is 93. Now, my homepage is not showing a map. The search functionality isn't until later on down the menu. But because these, the, the plugin or the theme loads things in, they're still kind of there. You can't see them, but they're kind of there. You know, they exist, they're floating around. And it affects your score. But by using certain plugins, okay, totally free, okay, I must stress that, totally free, I was still able to get up to 93%. And I'm like, I love it. So let me very quickly go over those plugins and then we're going to jump into my listing, okay? So at the moment on this website, I have got 11 plugins, which sounds quite a lot, but just look at what they are. Asset Cleanup. This is going to be used to stop certain plugins from being present on my home page. OK, so they don't need to be there. Therefore, why do I let them affect my performance score for my mobile and my desktop? Auto optimize we use throughout the website. Duplicate page. Well, that's just for duplicating pages. So you could get rid of that later if you wanted. Elemental, Elemental Pro. Definitely, definitely you got to have Elemental Pro. OK, images to WebP and PNG to J JPEG. Um, these are used for optimizing my images. Whenever I load in an image, the PNG to JPEG automatically kind of compre not compresses them. It, it converts them from PNG to JPEG, slicing off even more KB after they've been compressed. And then I do images to WebP, where I then whoop, convert them or shrink them down even more. Really important for your next gen images. OK, the Loco Translate, I don't actually need any more. That was for where I want to modify some of the theme descriptions. That one's actually going to go. So we're going back down to 10 plugins. OK, post SMTP. This is because my client is using a particular host where they have an issue with sending emails from WordPress. OK, SiteGround never have an issue. But my client uses this particular host, which has an issue. So we had to install that. It's free and it sends the emails for us. Jolly, jolly good. WooCommerce, obviously we need that because that's for the payment transaction side of things and WP Fastest Cash. Now, WP Fastest Cash, really, really quickly. I'm not going to talk about it. 
These are the only items you need to tick. Okay, take a screenshot and have a look at that. Okay, cool, right. Then we're gonna go over to all to optimize. And we're just gonna look at the settings for that. No, we're not, we're in the wrong one. Wrong one, we must not rush this. Right, have a look at the settings here. Okay, JavaScript options, look what I've got there. Okay, there is one other bit of code that normally will appear here when you first install this, which is JS, JS query, jQuery min. There's the word min in there, okay? Delete that one out, so that's all I got. Then we go to CSS options, look at what I've ticked there. Down here you will have another option, comma, it will say WP content forward slash, forward slash like that, upload. Delete that out because you do want that one to be all optimized, okay? HTML options, tick that, and then make sure these are ticked as well. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, then we go to images. And in images, I've just ticked this one here to say lazy loading, okay? But I have said lazy load after the first image. I don't want the first image to be lazy loaded because if you lazy load the very first image on your mobile or your desktop, that will load slowly. And that is usually why you get a content delay with your performance score. It might not be massive, but it can affect your score. So if you've got two or three images above the fold, if that's your phone or your computer screen, okay, what you see before you scroll down, that is above the fold. So if you've got four images above the fold, lazy load from the fifth image, okay? You wanna make sure the first four are not lazy loaded. It affects your performance, okay? And then in extra, and I'll say this to the day I die, I remove Google fonts. You wanna keep them in and pick any other option, you go for it, but remove Google fonts can make a difference of 20% on your performance score. What? Believe me, it happens, okay. Right, so that's that, that's all to optimize. Right, let's now go to the other plugin. Asset Cleanup. This is one I did not appreciate, but I appreciate it massively now. What do I do? I install it. I click this to say managing the desktop. Okay, and that is it. Um, I then tick this as well. Hide WordPress core files from the assets list. In fact, they're already ticked for you. So leave that as it is. Right, cool. Then I go to CSS and JS Manager. Right. I believe it or not, I don't touch any of a setting in it. It's just this tab here, CSS and JS Manager. I go in and at the moment, I could go through every single page, but I'm mainly concerned about the home page. That's the one that's really gonna hit the score and affect things. So on the home page, I will go in and I'm not gonna touch Elementor, but for the My Listing theme, okay, let me just show you this again, okay. Whenever you tick or hit this scroll button bar thingy midgy here, when you, well, when you click it, it's gonna unload it from the page. It's not deleted it from your back end. It's just not loading it on the front page. So Elemental, I'm, I'm fine with that, but from the themes for my listing, I basically started unticking everything except my listing vendor. Do not ask me why. You untick my listing vendor and your performance goes woo. But leave my listing vendor, don't unload that. I don't understand why, but anything else to do with uh, my listing, I've just stopped loading, stop loading, stop loading, stop loading. What I then did was then find search for map box. And how did I search? I just did control F or command F and put map box. And anything to do with map box, I again said, do not load on this page. Do not load, do not load, okay? Um, uh, I even stopped my listing material icons as well. If you get stuck, get in touch, okay? Right, so once that's all done, and I ran my performance score again, we went from 55-ish to 93. In fact, this is actually false because it was 97 about an hour ago, okay? And depending on the time of day I run this, it sometimes goes down to 88. And sometimes it goes back up to 97, 98. So it's always in that range. And, it, and it's basically down to the fact I, uh, down to the server and the server my client's using. 
I wouldn't go to them, but that's who they wanted to go for. So there's a little bit of, you know, movement, but we're in a very, very good place. So earlier it was 97 and 99 for the desktop, 97 for mobile, 99 desktop. Okay. So I know it's doing really well. Okay, cool. Right. Now let's go into the plugin. Now I am, I am showing you something that's already built. Okay. I'm not installing from a new, if that makes sense, because what you would do is you would purchase the plugin from Theme Forest. Okay. You would then go to plugins and add new, and you would go through the normal routine. You would hit upload plugin. You would put choose file. You will pick when you purchase it, you get given a WordPress installation file. So you don't have to worry about loads of other zipped folders that mean nothing. Just install that one. You upload it, you activate it, job done. Once that's installed, you then want to go down to your appearance and themes. And basically it will be your theme. So it's not a plugin, it is your theme. So if you're using Hello and Astra, you can get rid of them because you're going to be using this as a theme. All I did in the customized bit for here We'll just make sure it's got my site identity uh, logo and for the favicon, that's it. Okay, so in customize, I did not touch any other option on here. Okay, it literally was just making sure it's got our favicon icon. Okay, and our site title. That's it, nothing to worry about there. Then you'll notice that at the top of your dashboard, you now have three new options, theme tools, listing types, and listings. Now theme tools, it's really cool how this is built, okay? You go into theme tools and you just work down all the options, okay? So what? So I said, that's my site logo, accent color, background color. Do I want a loading screen? Now, some people do do this. The loading screen basically is where, when it's loading the page for about one and a half to two seconds, you get a circle spinner or rotating dots or even your site logo as it's loading up. People, I know people that do that, but you do that and you're actually then delaying your page load up. So don't do that because it will then knock your score down to 60, 65%. So I've said, no, I don't want a loading screen. In your header, just go through and mess around with your options. Um, so these, this is what I tend to go for. Um, uh, and you know, you can experiment and it work, whatever works for you. A lot of these options are already pre-built for you. In the footer, I actually remove everything. I don't even know why I have the header sometimes because there isn't a button to turn it completely off. Um, because even though it says here, show call to action button, I'm not using the my listing theme header. Look over here, this is the my listing theme header. All right, you've got a bit of a logo, you've got a search button here, you've got your menu at the top, sign in or register, which is like your WooCommerce button, you've got your cart and add a listing. It looks pretty, pretty cool. But rather than doing that, I did the header using Elementor templates because that's how I like to roll. And the same with the footer. So with the footer, I just took them all off because I like to have control over exactly the look I want and it for the client as well. The Explore tab, search. So when you do the search button, it will bring back the latest 10. And there is a button at the bottom for pagination where you can go to the next 10 or the next 10. So it's not like it only shows you the first 10. No, you can see more as well. And then I've said that um, the page is called tutor registration. It's actually tutor and parent registration, but this is me being lazy. Okay, uh, single listing. Um, this again is just some color schemes in terms of the border color. You know, um, how's it gonna be pre presented? And again, I would say do it and then after you've done it, see what it looks like, and then experiment and play around with it. I mean, it would be great if you had a window to the right-hand side, I think, where when you pick an option, it then has like an image that kind of shows, well, this is what it's gonna look like. Because we're very much used to that with Elemental, aren't we? What we do, we see and it happens, but I don't think they're ready to do that just yet. Uh, the blog, well, you can have a blog, but I'm not putting a blog on here. Custom code, here's a couple of codes you might find useful, okay? Find a map, display none. If you do not disable that, on the map, you sometimes get two icons appear. So you have an icon for to say, there is a tutor over here. And then there's another icon, which might be to say, this tutor specializes in an X. 
And if you're not careful, you have icon upon icon and it gets a little bit messy. So I would say, dot find a map, display none. I would take that off. So you do have an icon, but not an icon upon an icon, okay? And also, even though when I did the menu, I said the pointer is a background image, it's still underlined every time you went to any item on the menu. That's just because of the theme. So again, a link text decoration none. So that means that it now will not underline uh, the buttons. If you want it to underline the menu items, fine, take that line out. It's entirely up to you, but I'm just letting you know, that's a bit of custom code. And again, this is kind of great, but you can add in some custom CSS to add into here. I don't do child themes. I'm really sorry. Kick me in the face, punch me in the balls, do what you want. I, I just go with parent themes. I just don't bother with child themes just because I am the way I do things. I, I am very abnormal in how I do things. I do not follow the correct way. I just follow my way, whatever that way is. But um, shop page, if you're going to have a shop, you know, where you might list down further services or your packages or how you become a member or maybe, you know, you're a doctor website directory and you're going to start selling doctor equipment stethoscope, gloves, you know, things like that. You know, again, you can start to mess around here. Typography, I don't really mess around with this one at all. Okay, so that's quite a lot of list of things and we're only in theme options. We haven't even built the damn thing yet. Performance, well, every time I make a change to the website or any setting, a listing, a listing type, any setting whatsoever, I come over here and I just say, regenerate. It's a bit like regenerating the CSS, but I just do it. And it's super quick, okay? I've done it before where the longest it ever took was three seconds. And that had tons of info, but it, it just goes like that. It just does it really quick. Okay, listing stats. So this is where, um, so you know when I logged in as a tutor, I saw some charts to say how many times have people visited, where have they come from. Look, you can. I could activate browsers, platforms, unique view, chop and change. Your color scheme, go for it. Do what you want to do there, okay? Map services. Now, um, this, don't worry, you're not gonna see the full code there. I'm not gonna show you that, but you have the option of Google Maps or Mapbox, okay? They're relatively cheap, unless you start to have millions of users a day, then you might wanna reconsider how you do this. But I went for Mapbox because previously we've used Google Maps and it was a bit of a headache setting up with the API, you gotta click on this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, duh, 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 duh. four hours later, not four hours later, that was a joke. An hour later, after talking to the client on how to do it, because it's gotta be done on their account, not my Google account. And that's the other thing, it's, it takes a while. Mapbox, they have to go to the Mapbox website, click register, register, and as soon as they registered, they will then have this key appear for them, an access token. It's quite a long token, you can't see all of it. Email me the token, I add it in, Boop, we're done. <sighs> Some people will prefer Google Maps, but I was like, it made very, very little difference with what we were trying to achieve. User roles. Now, you will remember that when we, um, so this is enable user registration, when we went to the bit which was register, there were two options, teacher, or parent, guardian, student. The teacher option, here it is. So they are a teacher, I typed in teacher, look, there you go. They can add a listing, a teacher can add themselves to their directory. And here's all the fields we're gonna collect. Da -da 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 -da. Cool. Then we have the um, parent guardian. Okay, so we've enabled an alternate account. You can only have two accounts. So teacher or another one, okay. Um, they cannot add listings which makes perfect sense, right? Tutors can, but the parents can't. But they can also register. And then we also added in an extra field, which is what are you after? So when they register, they might say, I want to get extra help for my son, daughter, on how to play the violin, anything like that, okay? And so that then, once you've built, is basically now our registration page. We still have to create the registration page, by the way, but I'll show you that also. Direct messages. So do you want the tutor and the parent to be able to have direct messages with one another? Um, if you're happy with that, fine. If you're a little bit cautious over who is talking to who, 
because we might have students involved there, we did not want to activate that. So things have to go through admin. So it's very, very controlled environment. Um, that's up to you. OK, social login. You can enable this for Google and Facebook. I have to say, OK, sometimes getting this set up. Is more trickier than it than it's worth it. OK, and once I know the client is ready to sit there and actually start to get me the API codes and all of that, we might activate that. But right now, I feel like I'm pushing it a little bit if I'm expecting the client to start getting me all of those details. But you can enable it if you want. The other, uh, we didn't need to worry about simple products. Short codes, we did not need to worry about that either. Now, this is really cool. OK, over here, right, we have got the uh, Discover Great Places in London um, website. OK, and we could go in and look, you know, you could search for things. You know, look, you, you can start to search, look, look, map and whatever you want to look at. OK, great, 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 great stuff, but which is over here. You could actually import all of that to your website, or you could go for the property one, or you could go for the car one, and it will import the images, the listing group, the listings within, everything. And then you can reverse engineer to work out what you want to do and how you want to do it, and then rebuild your website. Now, the first time I used this, I installed this one here, and I'm really glad I did. Because it took me about two to three hours just to slowly go through methodically every option, making notes on, well, this is what they put in and this is how it looked. Manipulated it a little bit to get the look I wanted. And it's a great way to learn because you can easily go to your media library and delete the images. And once you've changed the settings, whatever they had is kind of gone. So it's not like you're going to have two search item bars and different pages. No. And because like you're building, um, your home pages or your about page in Elementor, this will not overwrite it either. It just kind of gives you the back end over here, all populated with what they did to get this built. So, you know, if, if you want to install it, install it. They're free. I mean, this, <laughs> this is really good, I think, you know, to help you out. Documentation. This is brilliant. OK, look. Installation, importing demos, header footer, pages and elemental. Let me just click and show you. Look, how do you create the ad listing page? Right, I'll tell you what, let's do it. Let's click it. Here you go, step by step. It's not got images, but step by step. Some of them do have images, by the way. Okay, and it tells you exactly what you want to do. I mean, this is really, really, really great because I've seen some themes or plugins and they go, yeah, we've got documentation. You go in and it goes, bah, 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 bah. and you kind of go, hmm. So how do I do this and how do I do that? And, you know, maps, um, there's even an area about code snippets and stuff as well, um, where you can add some code in. So this is really, really informative. I, I cannot, I, I cannot stress that enough. It is really informative in what it does. OK, so that was just some of the back end settings for my listing. We still haven't built anything. We're just kind of working through settings. Right now, let's go to listing type. We are only at the moment got tutor. That should say teacher, but at the time I did it, I created as tutor and I could edit it, but let's all say it together. I am lazy. <laughs> Not really, but I'm, I am a little bit like, oh, I can't be bothered. But I am going to change it when we get to the final stages. Right. So let's go to edit. I mean, uh, let me go back a step. If you don't have any um, types in here, you just click add new and you put a title in. OK, so let's go to edit. And this is what you would see for the add new or edit. OK, you type in what is your group. So let's say I had um, da, 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 like for over here for this website here. It's like for over here, we've got places, events, jobs, real estate, uh, cars as well. You would have one for real estate and you'll create a listing type for places. Another one for cars. Etc. Etc. OK, so each one of these is a category almost in its own, the group. Right. What you then do is you kind of just put down your singular name. By the way, like I said, I'm not going to go through every single setting here because what you want to do is install the demo of one of the three. Don't worry about the look because you can modify it. Remember that you're in Elementor. You can do what you want, but you install what you want and you will then see. Right. So this is what they did. Right. I'll overwrite that. 
And that's the other great thing. Just overwrite what they've done. Don't create a completely brand new one. Just overwrite it. Um, this doesn't have any paid packages listed into it. So what you would do is you would go to WooCommerce and I might have basic silver gold. And it might be that, look, for the gold package, you pay £50 a month. You're now on the directory. But you will also, I will also actively promote you on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, da, 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 loads of other stuff. We will do site engine optimization for your listing as well. Whereas for the silver one, we might say you can add yourself on, but you're not allowed to add a gallery. If you do, we will remove it and you don't get the SEO or the promotion. And you might have a basic, which is like you can add yourself, but you're only allowed to have you're not allowed to add on uh, social media. Uh, you can you can add on a, a phone number, but you can't add on your website. I don't know. Up to you. You create those in WooCommerce using products. OK, you create them using products and you put your price in. And then over here, you say enable paid listing. We don't have that for this website. But if you wanted to, you could do that. OK, you can enable reviews. So we're going to say reviews are allowed. OK. You can, you can upload images, you can do star ratings, full stars, and you can do half stars. It's up to you, okay? Expiry rules, I don't have any on here because we're not gonna say that you're on here for 30 days, six months, one year, whatever. If you have a membership, you may wanna go into that and start looking into adding that in. Schema, we don't need to touch that. And we're not gonna touch the other either for global listing type. I don't even fully understand what this is. So I didn't even go there for that. Then we go to fields. Now you will start off with one field called title. Please don't assume title to be Mr, Mrs, Ms, Professor, Doctor, okay? The title is gonna be what is shown in the results. So if I just go to like, uh, let's just pick this person here. Experience project manager is the title, okay? So if I'm now promoting tutors, right, like over here, I said this field is actually going to be, let me just do that, look, full name. It is the full name. So when they get uh, a profile of anyone, the name is there because that's the name of the tutor, whatever. If you want to have a description, go for it. But I thought the name of the tutor was more important. OK, and then what I did was I just started going down here and picking like fields like text area or a file upload, or email, or a number, multi-select, check boxes, and things like that. And slowly what we did was, look, you can see here we've got a custom field. It is a select field. So we clicked select, and basically we just, so we called it title role. And then I said down here, it is a required field. You must show it in the submit form, and it must be shown in the admin edit form. So in the admin, I can go in and edit that field if someone puts in the wrong field. But what we also did was we created it as a select field. And then what I did was, let me just show you, all I did was just paste in a list. No need for commas or anything like that. I just did that. That then means that when they go to pick that field, when they're registering, they now must pick one of those. They can't just type in what they want. It's got to be one of those. OK. Ba, 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 ba. Right. And, you know, look, we got we got loads of fields here. You know, email, phone number, we got subjects. That is a checkbox. So you can pick more than one. Look, required. And it, it's basically like that. Look, we just pasted in a list of um, entries. So now there's a checkbox. If we go down to levels, that again also is a checkbox with the option with the levels for you to pick. I mean, this is pretty simple. You're going to pick uh, for the postcode. This is important. You want to pick the location field. OK, which is round here and you want to call it postcode as the label. All right. And then I put a placeholder here to say add postcode and then click return. OK, because you can do it via city and country and all of that. But if you start to say, you know, uh, 20 miles away from this country, well, it's going to start picking up every country, which is bordering another country. So not the best way to do it or city even again, you know, play around with it. You'll go for what works. OK. Over here, we use the upload option, file upload. So we said they must upload their um, educational qualification. So I just clicked it and then I put in a label and they're allowed to, um, this is all pre-built for you. What are the file types they can use, okay? And they can allow multiple files, multiple files as well. I then said they must submit a cover image, okay? Uh, payment details, payment accounts, 
A disclaimer, this is just a checkbox where literally I pasted in this massive amount of text. Da -da 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 -da. And it's a checkbox. So at the bottom of the form, basically they're going to get something that says, you must agree to and a tick box. It's all built within the form, you know, because there isn't the option here, but you can use the checkbox to get around it. Um, admin email. These are hidden fields, by the way. So if I go to admin here, this is like the admin email address and I've ticked these as not required. You can't see them on the form. So what does that mean? Because it's within this group, at any time within the website, I could have a form somewhere which then kind of submits um, um, any changes or anything they type in to that address as well because it is now pre-selected. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, okay, right. So they were the fields, right? Does that make sense so far what I've done there? So they're the fields, right? So we've got general, we've got the fields. Then we've got single page. And this is where I've said the cover style. And you could go for a cover image, which is a big image, which is what they've kind of done here, in effect. In fact, they've not even picked anything there. You could go for none, which is what they've done. So there's no image, but you get this big black area. You go for cover image, so when they've uploaded a image, it will just have that as the background. Or you can go for a gallery slider. So if they submit, say, four or five images, you now get four or five images that are just slowly like a carousel scrolling in the background. It's, it's not a bad thing to do, you know, if you want to allow them to submit more images. Cover details. I did not do anything here. I just left it as it was. Quick actions. So these are my quick actions. So they were leave a review or share. So what that means is that when you find someone and you're looking at their profile, you can, if you want, share it across the world to other people, or you can leave a review. You have to be logged in to do that, but the option is there. And there are other things as well. Get directions, call now, um, website, claim listing. So I might be a geo directory or a director website, and I've said, right, in my city, I'm going to put down every coffee shop, and I'm going to let people leave a review on that coffee shop. Now, I'm an owner of that coffee shop. And I'm like, oh, hold on. My shop is on that website. And I will want to claim it. Because by claiming it, it means that I can now talk to the website owner and say, look, you know, can we change the image? Can we add on a few more details about it? There's nothing to stop technically anyone out there setting up a directory about shops in your area. People might not like it, but... You're allowed to do that. It's no different to you putting on a post on Facebook going, I went to this shop and it was appalling, right? Um, TripAdvisor, stuff like that. So you can do that. Contents and tabs. Now, in the contents and tabs, I picked profile and reviews. You can do bookings and related listings, but experiment and play around. Now, in the, prof in the reviews one, there's nothing for me to do. It's just show me the reviews like I did earlier. In the profile one, let's go back here. In the profile one, this is where I've said the layout is going to be two columns, okay? You can change this, okay, to be um, different as well. So the layout could be uh, two thirds and one third. So it's three columns, one third and two thirds, single column, masonry, two columns. I just went for two columns. I found the masonry two columns. I didn't did get that. Could you try? That was my friend. I found the masonry two columns did not look good. Okay, the two columns on its own works perfectly better because the masonry starts to extend things and look. It didn't look good. Okay, and this is where now I pull through the fields that I said are part of this group. And you'll notice I'm not pulling over every field. I had a lot more fields like uploaded files. Well, we don't need to show people private information and stuff like that. So I'm only pulling over certain fields. So what you do is you would go say, click text area and it appears. You can click these arrows to kind of move them back and forwards between which column, pick them up left and right. Let's go for the teacher type. And this is gonna be using that type field there. So look, here's all your fields, okay, that are available at the moment. And you can start to decide, right, which field is this gonna be pulling for? Yep, so I think mean, that's pretty simple. Um, then what we did was, we did, uh, where are we? Uh, similar listings. This is where you could say, I've gone in to look at someone who teaches, um, uh, 
primary education for maths. If there is anyone else who also teaches maths, they will be shown at the bottom of that person's profile. Now, I'm one of those people where if I was a tutor, or I'm paying for a service, am I really going to want someone else's results showing under mine? Probably not. So this is where, like, I will say we don't want to enable similar listings. But if you're doing a directory of coffee shops, maybe you will because you want to give variety and you want people to go, well, look, yeah, you've gone to this shop, but look, here's someone else, you know. Um, and you could also say, you know, show people based on their reviews. So, yeah, you clicked on that coffee shop. Here's another one who's got five stars. Maybe you want to consider them and they're in the same area. It's up to you how you want to build it. OK, preview card. This is where you kind of now decide on the preview card. So if we go back over here to this website here, this is the preview card that you kind of see. OK, and it's a very small one we got there at the moment because there's no image. So if we go back over here, this is where you now decide on how does the template look? Um, you know, is it just a list view, which is what they've got, or is it default view? Okay, we leave it as I've done it as default view, so they can actually see the teacher as well in the background. What is the image? Is it a gallery? Is it just an image? At the top, I've said show me the type. The type is going to say teacher or supply teacher, so that's right at the top. The field below the title. Remember, the title is the name of the tutor. Well, that's how we set it up. It's now going to tell me the levels. Primary education, GCSE, A-levels, degree, whatever. And then in the details tab below here, I've now said bring over to me the subject. So you just click add detail. And then when you click add detail, you then say, right, what field are you going to use? Now, you don't get a drop down here, but it does clearly tell you what you do is you do this. Uh, square bracket, square bracket. You then start to type a bit of the field name and it gives you the field name. So I'm now going to show the subjects down here. And again, play around with it. But like I said, if you use the demo import model, da, 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 you're going to have it in there, aren't you? And then you change what they've already got. Quick view, I just left as it is. Default map skin is light. I didn't really change anything in that. I left it as it was. You got lots of options. All right, entirely up to you. Then we go to the search form. Now, for this category, these are the fields we're going to have. We have a general search, which is automatically there. I then added in location, which is automatically there. Proximity as well. OK. Again, you can add that one. And in proximity, we said show it in miles. Um, how, what are the unit sizes and the maximum minimum value? We then added in a text search. Click that. And when you click it, we then said we want this field here, the type field. So this is now where they can pick a teacher. We have the subjects, we have the levels and the order by. So remember, when we were doing the search and I showed you, uh, I had the uh, the search bar, yeah, the search bar on the left hand side. In the middle, I had the results. On the right hand side, I had the map. The map's all automatically going to be there because that's how we set it up. And I'll show you that. But here's the search items. So let's say I had now a completely different group for coffee shop. I might now have coffee type or um, uh, late night opening or early morning opening or did I do breakfast as well? You will pick the relevant search bar, search filters you want to show there. OK, basic form. I don't do anything there. Um, so this is where you could have like. Um, this is where you could have another search bar at the top. So if we go to this website here, this is where you could have a search option up here. If you want to add it in, I did not want to do that for this website or the client didn't want it. So we left that off. Listing order, you can show the latest or you could show it by top rated nearby A to Z. Look, again, a lot, a lot of control. And I hope you can kind of see. Once you think about it methodically, there's a lot you can do on here. I think. Right. Yeah. Explore tabs. Um, this is where um, you could have a tab where um, they, um, so when you have, let me show it to you, when you're over here, okay, and you're now looking at a listing, if you have that enabled, okay, like so here, you can have another filter that is showing up over here. Um, I really wasn't, I've left that as it is, but I'm not fussed about that one, okay? But you can mess around with it, add regions, categories, or even tags, um, if you so want. 
So once you've done that, okay, you're now ready to add your listings. And there's two ways you can do that. But key, key thing here, right? Let, can you see down here for this listing type for the tutors? There's export config file and import config file. Well, I've done a ton of work here for tutors. I'm now going to create another group for, let's pretend we have one for supply teachers. The fields are going to be slightly different. The registration form might be slightly different as well, but it's going to be the same context, okay? I can click export config file and it sends it out as a JSON file, takes about two seconds. I can then go over to uh, my listing types. I can go over, well, I'll click over here. I can do add new, right? I'm going to come back to duplicate this, by the way. I can click add new, create a new group called supply teachers, and then import that config file. And I get an exact copy of what I just did for tutor. But all I've got to do is just go in and change a few fields. I don't need to spend an hour or two creating that after I've experimented that perfect group. I just copy it, job's done. Or oh, I could just hit duplicate this with the duplicate this plugin. That's why I've got it there. For duplicating pages and posts and whatever. So, eh, you know, <laughs> duplicate this is, is just as good at what it does. But if you haven't got duplicate this, export the config file and import the config file. It, <laughs> you know with this anyway, right? Well, I hope you do anyway. So that's cool, right? So we've got the tutor group. What we then do is we go over to listings and this is where now we can add a listing, okay? There are two ways to do this. First way is you, um, they would do this actually live online. So if they do it live online, the details of the person doing it is stored as the creator. So Mr. Smith comes to the website, he registers as a tutor, then he adds in his details. He is now the author and the creator of that. Or you can go to add new, okay? And I'm going to call, let's just call this Mr. Smith is his name. We only have one option, which is tutor. And it's gonna say leave. It always says leave, I never know why, because you're not actually leaving. But then because I picked tutor, all the fields for the tutor are now available, okay? So look, I'm just gonna show you here, look, you have the drop, you have the drop downs where drop downs are available. You have the checkbox where checkbox are available. Uh, you can add in your description, things like that. Um, if I just go down here and just type in um, a, this is not where I live, by the way, this is just a postcode where I used to work once. Look, map box, da -da -da -da. you can upload your forms, your, you know, however you want to do them, PDFs, images, whatever. We have uh, the disclaimer box. Now, if you do this, if you add it, you have to click on the question mark to see the disclaimer. If you do this on the actual live website, so someone registers and then they add their listing, as they should do, that is there next to the checkbox, okay? It's not hidden away the way it is here, okay? So don't worry about that. And let's take off the ad allow comments, by the way. No, no, we have to allow comments it's with review, yeah. Um, so what you then do is you click publish and then it will be published. And what would happen is, Let's say we've added in, well, we haven't, look, there we go, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith's not even submitted, it's a draft. So we're gonna delete that one, actually. Let's delete him out of the system. But here we have Joe Blogs. So someone I created just to experiment and test it out, okay? Above here was another box which said verify. Or was it confirm? I think it was confirm or verify. I think it was just to said both words. So what that means, that listing is not present on our website until I've gone in, checked the details, the forms they've uploaded, whatever they've sent you, I then hit confirm, they then become live, okay? They are now published to the website. Or I could edit it, or I could delete it. It's up to you, or contact them and say, hey, what are you doing on my website? Who said you could do this? Okay, so, and you can also search for people up here, right? So I could say Joe, okay? And it's gonna return for me who they are, okay? So the best way to do it really is to add it on a live website, because Otherwise, I become the owner and author of that item, which is fine if you've got someone who's not sure about it. But really, you know, I would say you've got to go through the motions. All right. Otherwise, you don't want to become admin for everyone and enter in all their details and get it wrong. All right. So get them to do it. Right. Once you've done that, you're now ready to do 
the two next two probably most important things. Right. Let me go over to pages. OK, these are all the pages that we've been creating. OK, cart checkout obviously comes with WooCommerce. OK, if you want to modify how they look, go ahead and do that. Um, but the key pages are the search page, which is this and the tutor registration or the tutor and parent registration. Let me just open up the search page, edit with Elementor and the tutor registration. Both of these pages were built brand new with Elementor. They were not provided to us via my listing. My listing used to give them to you, but the latest version doesn't. So I just went into add page, called it search, edit with Elementor, and then I am now in, where am I? Over here. I was now in this page here and it was a blank page. Nothing was here, okay? It was blank. What you do over here is you type 27 because the company behind this uh, who make my listing are 27. Is it collective? I can't remember now. I actually can't remember who makes it. I think it's 27 collective. Really sorry, guys. I forgot that, okay? If you're watching this, love you. Right. And then you have loads of items that you can pick it. But I found the only item I needed to worry about was the 27 explore listings. I drag it and drop it on. Then all I did was say what kind of template do I want. So I got template one, template two, which is slightly different, template three. They don't look that different, do they? But they are ever so slightly different in how they're presented. So I just go for template one and I had one column. I can go for two columns, three columns, whatever. OK, let me just show you. Look, if I do that, there you go. One column. OK, if I now go over here and I pick uh, two columns. This is what you're going to see. And the map is now no longer visible. Uh, you will have a button down here that says uh, show map when you're on the live site. So experiment, play around with it with what is the look you really want. I mean, sometimes some people won't use the map for geolocation or proximity searching. So if you don't want to do that, you don't need to get the map box API. You don't have to show it. Over here is then when you pick your group. So I've picked the group uh, for tutor. And look, I have a drop down and all I can pick at the moment is tutor anyway. But if I had two groups, so I don't know, uh, restaurants, tutors, coffee shops, so three groups, you pick add item, add item, add item. Because if you don't add them, they're not going to be present on the search or as the search filter or as a menu item for you to pick. I mean, that's really cool because you could have two pages for search, one that is purely for coffee shops and one that is purely for doctors. You know, the mind boggles, but yeah, you could do loads of things there. OK, uh, the map skin, I went for light. You can now you can, uh, look, there's loads of different options here you can go for. I went for light just because it works and you can mess around with your, you know, um, the, the, the colors, etc. Things like that. OK, play around with it. OK, right. That was the search. Look, there's the map view button there. That's it. And then when it's enabled, when you go to search, you can now search. That's all it does. The tutor registration, let's just shut that down. That again is a blank page. And I picked in the 27 ad listing form. Again, you know, you go over here, you type 27, you can even just type, that doesn't work, type in 27. There you go. And it was the ad listing form. Uh, where is it? There you go, ad listing form. If you want to drag them on one by one just to see what they are, go for it. You know, some of these are kind of like some of the widgets you already get within. Elemental Pro anyway, so play around with it. And all you do here is I just picked my card size. Again, you pick in what you're adding. So I picked in Tutor because that is going to be the form they complete. If I have a separate form for Supply Teacher or whatever, you would add that in as well. Enable, enable form section animation. This doesn't really do much, but I just picked it in anyway. It's just the way it kind of loads up the page. Package selection step. This doesn't even matter because we're not using packages at the moment here. But again, play around with that if you want. And the way it works, OK, is that this screen that we're looking at right now. And by the way, it won't show you until you go to preview. So when you view it there, it looks like it's disappeared. OK, so here we go. And look, you can see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Look, there's the disclaimer I was talking about with the checkbox. So you've got all your fields, etc. Only the tutor will see this after they've signed in or registered. The parent, when they sign in, will not see this. OK, so you could create a form or something which the parent can see, maybe, but it, they get a totally specific type of form. 
Okay, and I, I've tried not to go through this too quickly. I've just tried to explain that, like, I mean, this is my account. This is just basically WooCommerce, okay? Um, and this is just going to kind of, like, you know, I mean, look, it's going to show you this page because it's me logged in, but let me just log out. Ah, if I log out, it takes me completely out. But basically, look, here's the sign-in bit, okay? Right, look, so when you hit the My Account bit, the logout is not present until you've hit logout. Okay, so the logout is a drop down in the menu appearances. And then you sign, this is basic WooCommerce. Okay, you just go in. So you sign in, okay, and you're a tutor. You can then see your listing and edit it or add a new one. If you're a parent, you can sign in and you can now see what, how much you've spent, or what classes are coming up for you, for you or your son, daughter, anything like that. And that's basically it. And it's using 90% Elementor and then just, well, quite a bit and a bit for the directory bit. And it's, I think it's, 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 it's brilliantly useful. I mean, I think this is just like, like, Whoa, let's just zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. You know, I mean, you could have a worldwide directory here um, where, where you're looking at maybe um, a, a worldwide offering, maybe. Yeah. You know, Hey, you want to do a website about climate control and you want to have like um, uh, contacts around the world for people that are driving something forward? Here we go. You can now um, put down their details or how much they want to show. And on the tutors that we have here, right, I want to make this really clear. We're not really showing, sharing much, only what we were wanting to share for these, for what this website's wanting to achieve. But you can share website details on here, email addresses. You can share um, social sharing icons on here. You can share work hours on here. You can share loads and loads of stuff. You just pick the field, create it. There you go. So if you want to add in, you know, loads and loads of info for a directory, this could work for you. I mean, you could use this for a dating website. You might want to think about that a bit more about your fields and everything, but you could. And I'm just saying, telling you, okay, um, the best way to learn this, if you're still a bit nervous about it, is you know, um, get the get the fee, install it, import a demo, and go ahead and have some fun, okay? Because this website that we've built here, okay, uh, from 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 start to where we are now, okay, took about eight eight hours roughly. OK, and that's because I lost two hours because I was hardcore wanting to get that page speed score up because it was hitting 55 percent. And it wasn't until I realized, oh, God, yeah, asset cleaner. What am I doing here? Pull that in, started um, uh, unloading the map box and anything to do with my listing except vendor. Anything that is my listing vendor, there's two of them. Do not unload them. Leave them in. OK, got the score up and then I cracked on built the pages, duh, 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 worked out the fields, exactly what we want to do. And we were happy. And yes, I know it's not completely finished. Okay. Give me a chance, people. But we're nearly there. And there's other tutorials you're going to find with my listing that go through really, really stage by stage by stage by stage. Fine. I'm just telling you, get the demo, work through it, learn from it, modify it to suit what you want. But then just focus on the look and the look and feel of the website. Get it to be how you want. Okay, look again, remember, register. Teacher, parent guardian. And the parent guardian, okay, cannot add a listing. The teacher can add a listing. I hope this is super useful for you guys, okay? And I really, really do recommend the my listing theme. I am not against Listing Pro or any of the others out there, okay? I think they are all good and deserve their place in the world. But Full-blown integration with Elemental, tick, my listing. Ease of use, tick. Great Facebook group. You know, I'm going to give a shout out to Ryan Logan out there. Salute you um, because he's always there to help support you. Um, any questions you have. So great Facebook group out there. Great community. Yes, it costs money, but I think it's well worth it. I hope you like this. I hope you subscribe and I shall see you soon.